Okay, f it Friday, here we go. You know how we do. I get a couple topics from you, the viewer, the fan, and just go hog wild. I do no research, I look at it in the moment. So what do we got? All right, number one, trying to escape life. That's a good one. I will say one thing, it's impossible. You can't escape life, everything's life. Even laying in bed, eating chicken wings and shoving the bones under the covers and trying to forget that they're there, then smoking a ton of weed and going to sleep and then waking up the next day and finding the bones and gnawing the pieces of meat off that you, you left the day before. I'm trying to think of a scenario where you're being an absolute shit bag, uh, escapee, that's still life. But to your point, or to the point I think you're trying to make is, uh, uh, how do you get away from the stress? How do you get away from the anxiety of constant existence? Because as the Buddhists say, existence is pain. And it is. It is. You know, if you look at it that way, or, or, or it just is. But that said, I think when most of us say, I, I want to escape life, it's just, you just want to escape drudgery. You want to escape pain. You just have to take some time for yourself. I don't know what you're into, what you're doing, but you got to take some time to do, to just be like, I need this 10 minutes for me, for me, 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 me. Be incredibly selfish with that moment. Uh, uh, I believe you have to have treats in life. So I will give myself treats. Uh, in my case, it's, it's maybe a dessert or a few beers, you know, or just hiking by myself. So that's how you escape life. And while you do that, Think of anything that comes in your head that's negative. You know, anything that comes in your head that's negative, be it about yourself, about someone else, something that's pissing you off, something politically, something that it's going on at your job, and just tell that voice to fuck off. Anytime something comes in your head that makes you go, fuck off, I'm not dealing with you right now. You know, like uh, uh, my, my, my wife gets into uh, floating. I don't know if you've done that, sensory deprivation chambers. I've done it. It's wild. That's a good way. If you if you can spring uh, the, the, the I don't know how much it costs, 50 bucks or something like that to do it, that's a good way to just shut the world off for a while. But I've also met people who find it terrifying. So I don't know, go for the hike, have a couple beers, but do it for you and take negativity and go ahead and kick it in the dick, as Freud would say. Uh, okay, next one is Sam Talent's masterpiece, Running the Light. I am a friend of Sam's. Uh, if you don't know what uh, what that is, Sam Talent, a very, very uh, talented stand-up comedian, wrote an incredible book, or so I hear, uh, because he said he would send me one, and he didn't. The f Sam, I never got my copy. Think I'm gonna pay money? For a book written by a comedian who's friends with me. No, I should just buy it. I read the, the, the first five pages and was blown away by, uh, his mastery of prose. First off, writing is hard. Good writing is hard. And also how he nails, uh, the book is about a, a real shithead, uh, drug addict, alcoholic comedian. And how he nails, I remember opening for those guys. I, I had a point in my life where I was almost that guy. I, in terms of drinking, I certainly was that guy in terms of, I'm gonna have a couple, you know, too many drinks before a show. That's something I, I, I hesitate to even admit on film that I used to do where it's like, you know, it's your job. You can't do that. You know, but there were those guys who, it, it wasn't even, I almost said life is a party. At that point, at that age, it's not alcohol or drugs. It's not partying. It's medicine. You're taking it to maintain, to not fall off <laughs> the thought. But yeah, to your point, as you put it, masterpiece, it's, it's, you know, do you know the term masterpiece? You know what that actually means? It's not something you look at it and go, wow, that is a perfect thing that an artist made. What it comes from, I think it's from the Renaissance days. It was a piece that a person would create to show people that they're a master. You know, you get the difference, you know? So I believe Sam Talent's book is something he can be like, you know, maybe not necessarily a master, because that, that term is bananas, 
uh, you know, well, <laughs> you know, but it's definitely a book for him to go, look, I'm a writer and I write books. So respect to Sam. Send me my f***ing copy. No. But, uh, yeah, that's, I can't speak on it too much because I haven't read it, but I, uh, I'm so proud of him. And from what I, what I read, I really enjoyed, would sure as hell like to enjoy the rest. Cause I mean, I, I don't know why you won't send, it. I'm sure you just forgot, but I, and also, you bronger, you should buy one. You know what I mean? Come on. You're doing okay. Uh, okay. Next one is airport travel. Odd topic. Uh, I do travel in an airport uh, many, many, many times a year, more than most. So does my wife. Uh, I don't know really what to come at this from other than um, the, 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 the point is to make it as smooth as humanly possible. Two things, get TSA pre wear uh, not uh, difficult stuff to take on or off jacket wise and don't, you know, forget the little rules and all that stuff. But that's that's just making it smoother for you. I think the point is we have to help making smooth, make it, make it, help to make it smoother for each other. You know, we have to kind of look out for each other uh, because we, we, we are uh, uh, the consumers in this, this insanely uh, fast, I will say business. Planes taking off, landing all the time. It's just go, 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 go. It's an ever beating heart, every single airport, every single airline. So don't be a dick. Like if you have to wait a long time and like I, the people that went through that Southwest debacle, Southwest needs to like, come on. And, and the secretary of transportation, Buttigieg, needs to step up and institute some, some harsh regulations, you know, <laughs> not to get political. But I listened to a thing on it recently and was like, hey, Pete, come on, motherfucker, especially if you want to run for president. But that said, don't be an asshole. There, there, there's, there's nothing I hate worse than being in line behind someone that's just like, uh, uh, come on, come on. And they turn to you behind them, try to get you on their anxiety team. Am I crazy? Is this nuts? These people are f***ing ridiculous, right? I'm like, you need to stop talking to me. I'm trying to lower the temperature here for all of us. Yes, this is frustrating. And I'm pretty sure that person's working as, as hard and as fast as humanly possible. You know, and they're not sitting there playing Tetris. Hope that helped. Okay. And last and final topic is working out. Working out is a big part of my life. Uh, but I kind of do just enough to stay alive. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a guy who's doing exercise classes all day long or uh, going to jujitsu in the morning. But maybe I'll turn that corner when I get to uh, the age Anthony Bourdain did. He got his blue belt at 60. Like, holy shit. R.I.P. You are the best, Tony. Uh, but it's just a part of your life you have to institute, I believe. You have to have some element of your life that is exercise. And I'm now addicted to it. You know, I had a laugh with Ron Funches recently. We were on a show together and he's like, he's like, man, you look, you look good. And I was like, thanks Ron, you too. And we were talking about how we've been working out. And I'm, I just said how, you know, he remembers me when I was, you know, drinking all the time every day and stuff. And now it's just on weekends for the most part. Uh, but also I've cut way down, but that aside, uh, I was just talking to him about how, like, I'm addicted to doing something exercise-y uh, almost every day. There'll be, like, one day a week that I don't do anything like that, and I'm just a bum. Uh, but I'll devote at least half an hour, not, no big whoop, you know, a day to exercising. And I was like, I'm hooked. And he was like, yeah, well, I mean, it's still, a, you, just, you just moved your addiction. <laughs> Which I think is good. You have to have that thing that's a focus. Back to uh, uh, the person who was talking about the topic of um, uh, 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 how do you escape life. A good way for me is go to a spin class and just sweat out all the friggin' stress. You know? So it's, you can't, cannot, the thing, my thing, I cannot look at working out as a chore. It has to be something that I'm like, even though I'm like, all right. But even starting that class or whatnot is is you're, you're there, you're there. And you know, if you quit early, you'll be pissed at yourself. So that's all I'll, I'll say about working out. It just, it just keeps everything lubed up. And also if you like to have a couple drinks, sure does help. 
Sure does help your metabolism. Sure does help clean out your liver. If you have a cup, like two cups of coffee in morning, you know, every morning and exercise that day. I'm not saying you can shotgun a bottle of Everclear every night. Please don't do that. But it offsets things nicely. Okay. That is today's Friday. Have a great weekend and check me out on tour. Uh, it's, we're going all over the place. Who's we? I'm going all over the place. And I'm psyched to see you. Uh, click the link in bio for tickets. God bless.